apologize for that. Uh, my name is Chris Janiszewski. This is uh, Ken Holden. Uh, we both have the same role. We work for Red Hat. Uh, we're the OpenStack solutions architect. Uh, so what, what it means, we, we work with customer, we hear to their business needs, and then we try to find solution. Uh, hopefully it's OpenStack. If not, then you know, we relate to some, some other partners or products. But that's uh, pretty much it in a, in a nutshell. So we're going to talk about uh, Triple O a little bit. And, and this presentation is going to have two parts. Uh, first, uh, this, this session has been designed to accommodate uh, mostly beginners, but maybe a few of the advanced users as well. So we're going to talk about the first part is going to be about what Triple uh, O is and why do we care. Uh, and then we're going we're gonna to dive uh, deep dive into the, into the upgrade process. And, and Ken Holden will be able to show you how to upgrade in 15 minutes, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, and since this is, uh, I, I, I try to, my approach to this is uh, the OpenStack uh, has always been perceived as a pretty complex uh, platform to deploy. And we want to show you that you don't have to be a rocket scientist to, to run OpenStack uh, in-house and, and operate it uh, day two and, and upgrade. And uh, so we're going to try to keep it in this uh, wizardly uh, team here. All right, so, so what is, uh, what is uh, Triple O and how it all started? So, so it actually got started by, by our good friends at HP. They came out with the great idea of uh, OpenStack should be really good at deploying infrastructure, right? So why don't we use OpenStack to deploy OpenStack? So if you look at the slide, the triple is really designed for installing, upgrading, and operating uh, OpenStack. But what's, what's uh, really important here, it uses services like Nova, Ironic, Neutron, and Heat, and a bunch of other ones to, to really do that. And you know, just, just, uh, if, you, if you think about that, uh, I'm using Fedora on my laptop. And, and um, I always, like, like just a second ago, we were, I was, I was uh, worried that I'm not going to be able to display this thing on a big screen, because Fedora is not your mainstream operating system, right? So is other, other Linuxes. And by us using Triple O, we're trying to make it, you know, we're contributing to all these uh, projects that ultimately you guys are going to use in production. So I think this is, this is important. Uh, so my elevator pitch why you should be using Triple O. And everyone knows this picture. It's a, that's a Star Trek, right? <laughs> um, so first, if you, if you hear to, uh, to a notion, uh, we see a lot of um, companies, they, they try to move to this uh, way of, of the, the deploying your OpenStack in a, in a service way. Uh, so Triple O tries to make your deployment and, and upgrades and operation as simple as possible in a, in a product way rather there than managed service. And there's pros and cons in, in each method, right? Uh, with the managed services, it's definitely easier to have someone else get you to the OpenStack deployment, uh, but you just lose the control. And uh, as it is with the, with the public cloud, for instance, it's easy to get in. It's not always easy to get out, right? You have to have a trust in, your, in, in, a, in a managed service company that you're working with, et cetera. Uh, with, the, with the product, you pretty much have full control. And, and it does, again, I, I, I want to stress uh, here that you don't have to be a rocket science, really, to deploy and, and maintain OpenStack. And Triple O is the, is the tool that you want to use uh, for, for, to make it simpler. Uh, and it's not just for the, for the you know, POCs, cookie cutter type of deployments. Uh, Triple O, the, one of the biggest value of Triple O is, is probably is uh, ability to customize your deployment. Uh, when, when we picked up, uh, from Red Hat perspective, when we picked up uh, Triple O, it was in a, around Kilo release. I got I to gotta tell you, it was, it was rough. Um, and we, we, we would go to the customers and, and do, even like a simple POCs would, would take us a week, sometimes more, right? Uh, right now, with the, with the latest uh, release of the, of the triple O bits, we are in and out for the very simple ones in a, in a day or, or sometimes less. So, so it definitely uh, came along a really, really long way. 
Uh, as the new versions are being released, uh, there's a lot of new features that, that are being added. And then there's, of course, the, the in-place upgrade, which is the big part of this uh, talk. All right, so really quickly, what is Triple O? Again, it's deploying OpenStack from OpenStack. So think of it of uh, you deploy a single host seed OpenStack. Think of it as a packstat all-in-one OpenStack on single node where you have all your open standard OpenStack services. That's the one on the left. And then from there, you're deploying your actual production uh, over cloud, what we call over cloud. So this is a pretty, pretty simple, uh, simple concept. Uh, I'm, not, I, I'm gonna try to be as agnostic <laughs> as possible, I promise. I just wanna uh, tell you how this, there are two slides that are Red Hat related. So, so the first slide is uh, how we uh, present our uh, products. We, everything Red Hat uh, produce in terms of software, we, we contribute upstream first. And with, in terms of uh, OpenStack, we have this uh, model of upstream, middle stream, and downstream, where upstream is a triple O, middle stream is the RDO manager. Uh, so it's the, if you will, the, the one you can download from the RDO to, to deploy open, uh, Red Hat repackage RPM bits. And then the enterprise version is we call Red Hat OpenStack platform. And why did we, so this is the second Red Hat related, so, and, and then I'll, I'll be done with Red Hat. Um, so why did we do that? Why did we pick the triple O to be uh, the installer of choice? I, I gave you a bunch of other reasons before, you know, contributing to the, all, the, all the services was very important to us. But prior to, to triple O, we had like six different installers in-house. And you know, all, all people all over the company would use different installers to deploy it. It was, it was pretty messy, as, as you can imagine. So we decided, hey, triple O is the way to go. We, not don't, we wanna be a good guys, we wanna contribute upstream to all these uh, projects, but we also wanna make it as simple as possible to, to the end users. All right, so, so actual deployment, how do you deploy OpenStack using Triple O? This is a little uh, workflow that I, I put together, and ultimately you, you, you start with the, with the undercloud, with this seed OpenStack running on single host usually. Then you deploy, deploy it. Uh, you either create images for your over cloud, so for your production cloud, or you, or you download them. Uh, you registered your bare metal nodes. Um, then inspect them, make sure they have enough NICs and whatnot, or, or, or find out all the details about them. You deploy over cloud and you validate and do any uh, post-deployment task and you know, prof profit. All right, so, so really quick, how do, you, how do you deploy under cloud? There's a one configuration file that you have to specify all the DHCP ranges and what IP addresses you're gonna use for, uh, for, for the, uh, both under cloud and your over cloud, your in inspection ranges. And there's some, some extra parameters that will help you, for instance, monitor or, or run, I don't know, Tempest, validate your, your deployment, et cetera. So this is a pretty quick and, and easy example. And then when you do that, all you have to do is type this OpenStack under cloud install, and you have under cloud up and running. Uh, then again, you, you either download, if you're using upstream or middle stream, you can download the images from the, uh, I'm providing link for the, for the middle stream. Or if you're running Red Hat, you can just do yum install and the images, and all the images will get uh, downloaded to your, to your under cloud. And again, we use Glance to, to uh, manage these images to be deployed to the over cloud. So then you just use the regular Glance command to upload them uh, in. Then the next step, you register the nodes, so you put the credentials, you put MAC addresses for your nodes. You can do it either through the CLI or, or uh, JSON file, or you can use the new triple O UI. And you're ready to inspect them. So, so you're running the little RAM disk image that goes over uh, the, the machine and, and tells you how many NICs you have, what type of storage you have, and it just gathers all the information that you can use later to your, to your actual deployment. And then the last step is if you want really cookie cutter 
deployment, all you do is issue this one pretty simple command, so OpenStack over cloud deploy. Uh, in this case, I'm deploying one compute, one control, and you know, I'm, go I'm gonna have proof of concept uh, uh, OpenStack ready. So pretty, pretty straightforward. But of course, the triple O, the main advantage, as I said, of triple O is, is its cust customization. Uh, so I, this is not official list or anything. This is one of my buzzword bingo slides, so you guys uh, uh, can, can pick things from, from here pretty easily. But uh, I, I split it in the in two parts, core and advanced, so you can, you can make your networking look however you like, and then there's some storage, security, or metering, and you know, some, some more advanced, like you can, if you want to deploy a cluster that's going to be uh, handling some big data or, or bare metal or, or uh, I don't know, hyperconverge, uh, you can do that as well. Uh, and this is one example. This is one of our reference networking uh, topology, if you will. So you can see we, we can split all the networking. Uh, we, we can split your NIC configuration into some bonded interface and provisioning, and then we can separate these networks even more with the VLANs. But again, this is, this is just one example. It works really well. But then if you, instead of that, you want to, you have, I don't know, 10 NICs in your, in your uh, machines, and you want each of the network to run on a separate NICs, there's no problem at all with doing it. Um, so, so uh, Sky is the limit, pretty much, with the, with, the, with the networking configuration here. And then this is, this is a little bit more complex example, but I don't know how many of you ever uh, tried to put SRIOV on a running uh, deployment. OK, there's, there's some hands. Good, good job. It's not an easy thing uh, if, you, if you do it manually post-deploy. If you want to use triple O, there's really just you know, one template. It's just one example that will allow you to put things that you normally you know, put post-deploy in, in, your, in your configuration. And even though this might, might be cryptic for some of you, but if, you have, if you've done it before, it will make a perfect sense. I guess, what I'm, again, what I'm trying to uh, say over here, there's a lot of features built in uh, that you can use right out of, out of the box. And there's another example for the, you can write your own custom extension. So if, if it's not built into triple O, if there's a feature that you want that's you know, maybe even uh, more extreme than, than the one before, then you can pretty much write whatever you want yourself. So pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, there is a concept that got introduced in Newton uh, with Triple O called composable services. This is my by far the most favorite feature. Uh, you're, you're not, you don't have to build your cloud to be monolithic. You can pretty much create your own custom roles. And um, for example, you can create a networking role and, and create some sort of services to be part of that profile role and deploy that to your, to your bare metal nodes. Uh, just to just to little example I've done on my laptop actually that I'm running here. I created this role called Uber Hyperconverged, uh, and this role, even though it's not supported by us, it was pretty good for me to use on my laptop. What I did, I merged all the services, compute, storage, so Ceph storage, and and all the controller nodes into the single role, and I deployed it on a three VM. So this way I get benefit of running HA cluster in a VM, of course, right? Uh, you know, but, but the, it kind of shows you the, the benefit of composable services. Not only you can detach these different roles, like, I don't know, Glance API, et cetera, but you can merge them together and deploy them however you like. So very powerful uh, stuff. And why this is important, again, you can, you can decouple the resource-hungry uh, services, right? So if you're, key, if you're running the multi-cloud or something and your keystone is being pounded all the time, you can detach that from your monolithic deployment and run it somewhere else. Or you can merge two or more services, like I, I mentioned storage and compute. If you want to save on, uh, I don't know, you, you have a limited space in your data center, you can, you can certainly do that very easily with triple O. Uh, accommodate different hardware, snowflakes, and create the uh, custom configuration. And you know, you, you will end up ultimately, like if you're not running production, I don't know if you remember my previous slide, I had this one liner at the top and, and I was able to deploy something in a POC way, but you will ultimately end up in a deployment command that looks more like this, 
where you have a lot of customization, like network isolation, if you want to do Sahara, enable TLS, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, and this is the quote from my most favorite games. I don't know if anyone recognized what the game is. Witcher, anyone played Witcher? Yeah. Awesome, yeah. Uh, so, so there's a bunch of features that, that uh, came with the latest and greatest triple. They're, they're features being released uh, all the time. Uh, I'm not gonna go over all of them. This is gonna be more like buzzword bingo again. Uh, but we added a lot of functionality around day two uh, operation in, in uh, Triple O. So you can deploy things like FluentD or Sensu Client or CollectD. Uh, we added a bunch of uh, Ansible. Uh, and there's just a couple of screenshots I want to show you. This is the, the one you can operate, like in day two, you can track your, your logs with the Kibana dashboard and a, and a FluentD that runs on your, on your overcloud nodes. There's a Sensu Uchiwa dashboard uh, example here. Uh, collect D for, for performance metrics. We have a, we we're, we keep adding a lot of uh, Ansible validation. Again, we want to make it as simple for the end user to install OpenStack as possible. Uh, so we're trying to, community uh, adds a lot of uh, simple validation that will check, for example, this example, if you're flushing your tokens, uh, if you have a job in your, in your cron that flush your token, so after a while you won't, you know, run out or you, your database will not grow to the massive size and you won't be able to run it. So, so there's, a, there's a lot of validations like that that are being run in, a, in this case, in this triple uh, O UI. And everyone contribute, contribute to those too. Uh, and we, we uh, finally, Triple O got the, the pretty UI. I think that was one of the things that we, we were hoping to get uh, earlier. Uh, we were always CLI driven from the, from the Triple O perspective and, and now we have a nice uh, UI that you can complete and, and maybe help the guys who are new to the OpenStack to, to get their foot in the door in the knowledge and be able to deploy uh, in, a, in a quicker way, even quicker way than I showed you before. And this is my last uh, triple uh, uh, buzzword bingo here. There is a lot of features beyond that that came to the, uh, with the triple O. If you guys have questions about any of these topics, please see us after this talk or we were gonna be at the booth and we'll be more than happy to, to tell you what it is and how it works and how can you take advantage of it. And then finally, I'm gonna uh, switch it over to, to Ken who's gonna uh, walk you through the, the upgrades. Thank you, Chris. Um, so for this, I recorded a video. The upgrade process is lengthy, right? So I try to consolidate three and a half, four hours of time down into a 15-minute um, video that I can walk through. This is on a nine-node bare metal um, OpenStack environment, three-node Ceph, three-node controller, active, 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 uh, two compute nodes, and running instances on it. Um, so without further ado, we'll talk about the process. The workflow for there is a minor upgrade and a major upgrade. A minor is going to keep you within the trunk release. Um, so if I'm running Mataka environment, or the Red Hat version of that is OSP9, um, I'm gonna run an update that's going to apply patches within the Mataka release, OS patches as well. Um, a major upgrade is when you're taking it from a major trunk version like Mataka to Newton, which is what we're gonna do in this video. Um, so prior to starting this, this is something you wanna plan out. As I said, it, does, it is a fairly lengthy procedure. Um, it can take, depending on how large your environment is. So my nodes, my environment took about, as I said, about four hours. So if, with eight nodes or nine nodes. If you have you know, 100 nodes, it could take a little longer. Um, so you wanna back up your config files, back up your environment as you normally do, and do this in dev test first to get familiar with it, and then um, take it to production. Um, so the, the basic process of it is we're going to upgrade that under cloud that Chris was talking about. Um, so in a similar fashion of how we installed the under cloud using the OpenStack under cloud deploy, we're going to use the OpenStack under cloud upgrade. And what this is gonna do is, well first I'm gonna do a yum update of the Python triple O client. And that kind of updates all of the bits on the director node to OSP 10 um, or, or uh, Newton. And then we're gonna run OpenStack under cloud uh, up grade, which will then bring the running triple O version and the OpenStack that's running on that director to, uh, to Newton. And then once we've done that, we wanna do one final step before you actually begin the major upgrade. And that is we wanna make sure that we run um, an upgrade of all the patches within the Metaka release so that Metaka is up to the latest and greatest bits before we move to um, Newton. And we also wanna make sure that the OS is up to date as well because there's Red Hat's building in patches within the update uh, within the rel updates that 
a lot of times go along with the, uh, the major release of OpenStack. And so let's go to the actual demo. How are we on time? Is that it? There we go. Okay. So I'm going to move just a little bit ahead of here just to get to the meet. All right. So what we're going to start with is the, the way we deploy in OverCloud is we, we use templates and we, we do what we call deploy. And so if you're a good little admin, instead of having to type this out all the time, you create a, you create a, a script, a deploy script. So that way when you're going to do a future deploy, to maybe expand your OpenStack environment, add compute nodes, add Ceph nodes, and so forth, that you're making sure to run the same routine over again. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that OverCloud script file that we use, and we're going to copy it, just repurpose it to another file, and we're going to source one of these YAML files. And this is the first step of the upgrade. This process updates Salometer, moves it to a WSGI service um, from a standalone service. So we're going to take that. And once we save that file, we will run that. And that process, it's doing, an over, it's doing a full overcloud deploy. It's obviously not adding more nodes at this point, but it is going to take a while to go through all the nodes, uh, make sure that the, the code is up to date. And so once this is done, so this is, usually takes 30 or 40 minutes. We, we, we trimmed a lot of the video out, so it should go pretty quick. So once this is completed, we want to head over to the controller nodes and make sure that the controller, uh, that pacemaker, the, the clustering um, uh, software is, is all clean and happy. So it's just finishing up now. So right now we're still at OSP 9, essentially. We haven't updated any of the bits yet. We just moved a service. So now we're going to SSH to a controller. Become root and just run PCS status. And if you take a look, this is the long list of resources in this cluster. So OSP9 and prior, or, or Mataka and, and, and prior, we're running 124, give or take, um, resources in the cluster. Because every single service was a resource in the cluster. <clears throat> With OSP10, though, you're going to see a huge change in that. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the next step. The first step was succeeded. So the next step, we're going to start to do the initial um, pacemaker upgrade. And it's also going to change the uh, YUM repos from OSP 9 to OSP 10. Um, if you have like a satellite server or, or a custom YUM repo, um, you would want to source that, uh, those YAML files. But in this case, I'm just tied to Red Hat's um, RHN. So we're going to go ahead and run this, this separate, second upgrade. Same kind of process. Takes about, takes pretty much exactly the same amount of time. <clears throat> and then once it's completed, we'll head over to the, uh, to the controller, make sure everything looks good. And one note, we're running OSP 9, if you see down at the bottom, is the GUI showing OSP 9. We're going to look at that in a second. It's going to show a newer version. <clears throat> we still have all the services because we haven't done the actual pacemaker upgrade yet. That's the next step. <clears throat> but I'm about to do a yum uh, repo list. And you'll see the OSP 10 repos and the Ceph storage 2 uh, repos instead of the previous versions. There's still one OS 9 in there, but that's the ops tools. It's not used for this update. So it did all of that magic for you. You don't have to worry about doing that. So now we're going to go to the third step, which is actually where we, we upgrade the controllers, update the software. So we're going to bring them from the Metaka code to the Newton code, uh, apply the, the OS updates, and we're actually going to update the configuration as well so that Pacemaker is now in line with OSP 10. And the, um, uh, so, is the, so is the uh, configuration files for the uh, Woodstack. Uh, and in, the, in my OSP 9 environment, I had deployed Sahara. Um, I'm going to undeploy it. So I, if you saw, there was two lines in that, in that uh, script. So one of them was to remove Sahara because I didn't need it anymore. So at the same time of uh, updating, I'm also removing or adding different features. So we're going to go ahead and run this upgrade script.
And this one's a longer one because this one's going to be running, as I said, yum updates, so you're dependent upon how fast you're going to get your software. Uh, it's doing quite a bit with Pacemaker, and you're going to see that in a moment. So now, like, like every, between every step, we're going to go to the controllers, and we're going to go take a look at Pacemaker. And this time, we're going to look at Ceph as well and see the health of Ceph. So this time, when I do a PCS status, I only see 19 resources configured, down from 124. So now all the OpenStack services are independent services. Um, the, the Pacemaker cluster is handling the heartbeat, the BIPs, the, the um, Galera, the um, RabbitMQ, and Redis. So now, as I said, at the bottom, you saw the version 9.0.1. We're going to re-log back into Horizon. And in OpenStack platform from Red Hat, we, we put the version number in the, uh, the bottom right when you go to um, admin services. However, when I did this upgrade, I noticed there was a bug uh, that instead of saying OSP 10 or saying, uh, instead of saying 10, it says Red Hat version. <laughs> so uh, I need to open a bug on that. I just discovered that last week. And you'll see that in a second. And as you can see, the, the output is a lot different. The services are changed. So there's the words it says Red Hat version, or should say 10. Network agents, now I can see and view um, where my, where my uh, HA routers are, which wasn't a feature in OSP 9. And just showing that all the services are up. up. So we basically, if we do, we've done a rolling upgrade of your OpenStack environment, your control plane. Um, the three node controller allows us to do it one at a time, bringing one node out of the cluster, upgrading it, putting it back in the cluster, bringing another one out, upgrading it, putting it back, and so forth. Um, so I have an instance that I had deployed two and a half days before um, doing this upgrade, and as you can see, it's still been running. Uh, the only thing that gets disrupted is uh, if you have floating IPs, which I did to that instance, they would have had a they would have suffered an, a, a disruption because we're restarting Neutron. Um, so there will be a slight blip, um, but if you're in provider networks, it should be it should be an issue. So I'm just doing an uptime on the instance. So the next steps, now we've upgraded the control plane, we need to upgrade the, the Nova compute and the, the Ceph nodes. Um, so we do this from the director, um, but we're not using a, a deploy command, we're using a, a custom script that was deployed um, when we did the first, uh, actually the second step of this upgrade, it deployed a couple extra scripts. So this script we're running against the Ceph nodes, and it's gonna go to one Ceph node at a time, stop the OSDs, upgrade the Ceph node, upgrade the Ceph version, uh, and OS and all the other stuff, um, and then start it back up, bring the cluster back to a good state, and then go to the next one, and go to the next one. Um, so if you saw before, we had three Ceph nodes, 18 drives. Uh, we're going to uh, see that state in a second, and it'll show that they've been updated to Joule, and they're in a healthy state. So as you can see at the bottom of the screen, it says Ceph was upgraded to Joule. And if we do a Ceph, um, dash S, you'll see the status. It's gonna show a warning because there's one final step that I need to do that isn't in the, um, uh, this automated process where I need to tell the OSDs, I need to set a flag on the OSDs, but, um, but so that's why it says health warn because it's saying they're, they're still, they need to have the required Joule OSD um, flag set. But as you can see, 18 are up and they're in, the cluster is in an, an active clean state. Um, and my instance never went down because I had um, distributed data across the three Ceph nodes. Um, we were good to go. So next step is to upgrade the computes. And although we could upgrade them all at one time um, in a rolling fashion like we just did, it wouldn't take into account the instances that are on the image, uh, that are on the Nova nodes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at, we have compute one and compute two. I wanna see what instances are running on compute one. I have an instance running on there. So I'm gonna live migrate that to compute two, and then I'm gonna upgrade compute one. And once I'm done compute, and before I upgrade compute one, I'm gonna turn it, disable its Nova service so it's, the scheduler doesn't send anything to it. So now I can see that that instance is running on compute two. And I'm going to disable the, um, the service. And then once I do this, then I'll run the, the um, the upgrade script for the Nova node. And, it'll, and I'll specify the specific um, ID of that Nova node. And so this is gonna go out up 
change its repos from OSP9 to OSP10, Ceph repos to Ceph2, apply the updates, um, apply the configuration changes to Nova, restart the services, and bring it back into the cluster. And then once it's complete, then I will turn it back on uh, Nova. So here's where I'm gonna enable the Nova service for it. And then I'm gonna fail the instance back. And I made one mistake in this, um, if anybody's gonna, let's see if anybody catches it, but um, in OSP 9, in previous OSP versions, there was a bug with the OpenStack unified command line um, where when you typed block migration, it actually did a shared storage migration. And if you type shared storage migration, it did, it did a block migration. Um, so you had to switch them. But in OSP 10, that's, that's not the case. So due to me doing a block migration right there, I actually shut the instance down. Um, but if I would have typed uh, shared migrate, it, it shows that it's running, but it's actually, uh, it actually will update to a down state. But uh, nonetheless, if I would have done the, the correct uh, command with that, it would have been running. And of course, if you had multiple instances, you'd want to be doing a Nova evacuate versus a single instance at a time. Now we're going to upgrade the second uh, the compute node. This and the Ceph node portion were the lengthiest parts because there was a lot of packages being downloaded and stuff happening. Due to video magic, this is the fastest uh, yum up that you've ever seen. It's my son. He watches uh, PJ Mask. He would say super cat speed. <laughs> you know, he has kids. <laughs> my kid watches that too. <laughs> so now we're going to enable the, the final compute node. So now uh, workloads can start going back to that compute node. We're going to go check on the controller real quick just to make sure that Ceph and, PC and Pacemaker are happy. And we see again, Pacemaker's all clean. Normally at the bottom it would say that there was an error. I'm showing no errors though. So now that we've essentially upgraded to OSP 10, the compute, the, contr the controllers, and the Ceph nodes, we need to do a few finalizing steps. This one is going to consolidate all the changes we've made in Pacemaker um, and make Pacemaker the cluster in, and, uh, in line with the, the, new heat, um, the new YAML files that are deployed with OSP 10 on the director. So we're going to do this major upgrade Pacemaker converge. It's not start stopping any services or anything like that. It's, it's just um, kind of redoing, uh, redoing Pacemaker. This one, this one usually goes by pretty quickly. But at this point, your users can, you know, you're, you're, any type of disruption is, is not happening. So they're, they're, your OpenStack's happy. It's been happy the whole time, as I said, with, with a minor interruption to floating IPs. So now we're going to just make sure Pacemaker is good. Ceph is good. And then the last routine we're going to run is in OSP 10, or Newton, we move um, the, the Solometer database from Mongo to Maria. So this is going to be the final step to do that. So using the same overcloud upgrade script I had before, I'm just gonna copy that, change the, uh, you don't need to do it that way, that's just how I did it. You can type all this in manually if you wanted to, but I'm gonna specify the, the, that specific YAML file. I'm not ha I don't have to make any changes, it's complete templated based. There's no changes necessary that, that need to be made to that YAML file or any of the YAML files that I've used today. And this is gonna run through the final deploy and once it's complete, the upgrade is finalized. A little bit of video magic. And if you look at the clock on the Mac, on the screen, it says 1234. I think I started around one. Um, now, I had to do the underclock before, which I didn't show in this video, but. So, I, oh no, I think I started around 12 o'clock. And now, so we're just gonna validate one last time that Pacemaker's happy and Ceph node, uh, that Ceph is happy. And your environment is completely done. And then you can finish your 
change control weekend and go back to bed. Voila. And I'm just going to look at Ceph one last time. I do need to do the Ceph OSD set whatever required jewel OSDs command um, to get that health warning to go away. But, and that's it. All right. So is there any questions about that? As Chris said, definitely, if you don't ask now, feel free to hit us up after, but please okay. use the microphone. And there's Mike, if you guys don't mind, there are mics in the middle. Uh, so, you know, we can, we're recording this session so, so folks can hear it as well. Yeah, hi. Can you summarize again for the minor or especially the major upgrade? Summarize again, what exactly is the impact to services from a user's point of view? Sure. Does so it depend on the live migration? It, or? it depends on your environment. So in this environment that we're, we're running this on, I have nine nodes. Uh, so three active controllers. So I can bring one controller down or two controllers down for that matter without losing disruption of services because I'm running active, active, uh, highly available routers. Um, you know, my Ceph node is highly available. So as long as your environment is, you know, highly available, the upgrade process should be seamless to your, um, to your users. The major upgrade process, though, is going to stop Newton, the, uh, a Neutron. It's going to stop Neutron. Um, so there will be an interruption to L3 traffic coming into the OpenStack environment. If you're running provider, which is L2 coming in, um, there won't be a, a disruption. Is that okay? Sir. Hey. So I've seen you have uh, several scripts, right? Obviously for package upgrade and such. But the rest of the stuff, it looks like it user has to do it manually. Like the orchestration of the compute nodes upgrade, that's up to user manual stuff like live migrations and, st and such? The live migrations are up to the user, yeah. So it's the, the, this upgrade workflow does not take into account instances on the uh, running Nova nodes. So if you care about them and you want to live, you need to live migrate them before you do. So you're just gonna do, it's, it's just for the, the Nova upgrade portion. So for Nova, I'm gonna just gonna move instances from one host to another, update that host that's not, not running anything now and then move everything back. So I can do a rolling update without, when I do live migrate, you're not gonna feel a, a loss of, of connectivity, so. Does that answer your question, or is that, is that what you're asking, or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hi. Sir. Yeah. Uh, do you have a, 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 a um, table showing that uh, from which release to which release actually is like an inline upgradable, which are not? Because my understanding is that the underlying is using the Maria DB and uh, save all the inf information into the tables, right? What if the schema actually changes? Do you guys have like a scripts to, you know, do the schema update as well? So, so data from this to the other. So with Red Hat, we support specific version to specific version, right? So okay. we do, it, we, you know, version plus one. So if I'm running Mataka, I can go to Newton. If I'm running Newton, I can go to Okada, if I, you know, and so forth. Um, and we've tested that to to make sure that if you've deployed and a, a Red Hat OSP 9 deployment that it will upgrade to an OSP 10 deployment. Um, so that should be a taken into account. Um, but if you've done you know, a lot of manual stuff to your, your overcloud, um, you're, you're kind of at a loss for being able to upgrade because from a supported standpoint, we're, we're taking into account that you used director to deploy 9 and did updates using the director methodology and then went to 10. But there are tables that list um, you know, software version to um, to trunk version, if that's kind of what you what you mean. But I think from a supportability standpoint, though, it's version plus one. Okay, all right, yeah, I think so. But also, like, uh, uh, let's say, like, uh, before you use the Nova network, and uh, and and now um, new is more like a new chunk uh, suggested, recommended, right? And, and and all those tables should be keep as. Yeah, so if you're using Nova Networking, um, I don't think this would be a candidate, but, but Nova Networking has been deprecated since before um, Director came out. Mm -hmm. um, so from a Director standpoint, it's gonna be Neutron across the board. Um, but, uh, I yeah, but, but I think for the, so, so Nova Network, is, as uh, Ken mentioned, would, would not apply here because it was deprecated prior to us, you know, uh, adopting triple O. But, you know, we have some other examples, like Celometer is a good one, right? Like it got, uh, uh, broken down into a bunch of smaller services. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, if from one release to the other release, uh, you know, triple O, make sure you have all the right steps in a, in a script. So you don't have to really worry about it. The triple O is going to take care of it. And one thing to add to that, too, is that what we're doing right now is an in-place upgrade. If you wanted to add features, right, 
within a major version. So if I wanted to add, let's say I didn't have Sahara and I wanted to add it after the fact, I would either add it before I upgraded or after I upgraded. I wouldn't add it usually during, right? Or if I wanted to go to DDR, or if I wanted to say, use SSL for the endpoints because I wasn't using SSL for the endpoints here. Um, I would do a deploy again, sourcing the YAML files that do that specific routine. I would just wanna make sure that I do that after my upgrade and everything is settled. Um, so you don't want, you want, during the upgrade process, you don't wanna be expanding it, adding more nodes. Um, you, you wanna let the upgrade, just do the upgrade yeah, and not anything else, but yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Thank, you. Thank you. Good question, thank you. Hi. Um, so does this work for OSP 8 to 9? Yes, or? and 7 oh. to 8. No, no, the, well, the, the example we showed here was 9 to 10. But it's supported and, and works with uh, 8 to, if 8 to you, 9. If you look at the any upgrades, they're going to be very similar. The notion of upgrading is going to look exactly the same. You're just going to be executing different steps, different YAML scripts to upgrade from one to the other. So. Uh, from the Red Hair perspective, uh, Okata is, is not out yet. I think, I think it's coming really soon. Uh, but you're going to have exactly the same, you know, not the same, but the same type of uh, work uh, in the future releases as well. So it doesn't have to be, it can be on, let's say, Kilo, right? To yeah. Mataka, right? Yep. Uh, it, it, you have to go, it's, it's only version, of, yeah, so Kilo to Mataka, yes. But you couldn't go from right. Juno to. Yeah. Sure, sure. <coughs> the other question is uh, um, you mentioned about the floating IP, so. Uh, during this process, uh, the VN, the floating IPs, they're going to stay the same or it's going to be changed? No, they won't change. Uh, but the L3 agent and the, the Neutron server behind it has to restart. Okay. Um, so it's going to flush that. Uh, it's, it's, so it's going to cause a temporary interruption. If you look at the docs, the docs are done so well, though. They, they, they call out step-by-step -step scripts. They list specific gotchas like floating IPs and so forth. So um, take a look at the docs, especially the OSP 10. The latest one is, is, uh, is perfect. It really, and I literally, to do this deploy, I followed step by step through the docs uh, without a single issue. It was flawless. Yeah, <laughs> so. Are you talking about the triple doc or the red hat? The red hat doc. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, last question. One sure. more question is that um, um, you mentioned about the, a lot of services came out of Pacemaker too. You know. Mm -hmm. So is that um, just is that going to be controlled by System CTL? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the, the idea behind it is that System CTL does a great job of doing it. OpenStack services, they don't, need a, they don't need Pacemaker to start them. They can just start, and when, when whatever they're talking to comes back up, they'll just resume connectivity. Uh, the important ones are the database, obviously, because we need a glare to replicate and, and rabbit. This is a big one, and the VIPs. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, and I think another reason behind why we, you know, we, we move these guys uh, off the pacemaker is it's easier to detach these different services to this concept of composable role if they're not managed by some uh, cluster, clustered uh, mechanism. A um, <clears throat> couple of quick questions. We would still need composable upgrades to order services within an upgrade, right? Uh, you wanted to add more services? Like you wanted, let's say you wanted to add DVR or something like that, is that? No, I want one service to be upgraded or one role to be upgraded before the other one. Ah, um, you can do it so they, 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 it's documented doing the method that I did, but you can also upgrade services individually. Um, so if I were to do, let's say, uh, a SSH controller, do a yum update on Neutron, you know, or take it out of Pacemaker first, upgrade Neutron, restart that, bring it back up. I could do it manually if I had a specific need to do that. And, and actually, uh, so composable roles were new to Newton uh, in, in triple O, and uh, upgrading composable roles in the next version of Kata is, is going to be part of the process as well. So you're going to have ability to upgrade your composable roles, you know, services running separately. Yeah, but you can't go, in OSP9, since uh, composable roles didn't exist, you can't go from OSP9 with no composable roles to OSP10 with composable roles. If you're upgrading from 9 to 10, you still have the control plane that you had in 9. Um, so that's one, one, one caveat. But that's changing too, actually. It is, in, yeah, in the future. So there's, more, there's more coming, right? Yep. So, um, so if I have OSP 10 and I have a composable role, then 10 to 11 I should be good, right? Yep, yeah. absolutely. And so 10 is an, a long-term release, right? 11 and 12 are short-term releases, and 13 is the next long-term release, and we're, we're gonna support 10 to 13 upgrades so, so that customers can stay in a long-term release and upgrade to long-term release. Yep. Excellent. Um, how long did the, for that to come out? Um, it's, well, we, we, we usually follow, follow Trunk, so we're usually a month or so behind Trunk. Um, so every six months we come out with a new version, and so we're right now OSP 11 is about to hit. 
um, which is a kata. Um, and then, you know, so we'll follow in line with 12 being the um, uh, bike version. And then uh, 13 will be six months after that. And we support, out of the box, we support OSB 10 for three years, but you, you can expand that to five, five year from point of release. So five year support of your overclub. Uh, I don't see any other questions. I appreciate everyone for coming, and thanks. That was a great question. Thank you. Thank you.